Hey, thanks for joining us. We've got a uh, emergency QuickBooks Online tutorial video here tonight. Uh, wanted to get a very quick video just put together because uh, we got a question here from our YouTube channel. One of our viewers, Komal Thakur, uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly or close to correctly. But Kamal asked, can you please explain how to use sales side invoice records and receive payments in QuickBooks? Uh, so that's an excellent question. Uh, so first of all, I just want to thank everybody who's watching these videos and commenting or asking questions. That's been really cool to get that uh, engagement there. We love getting the comments, reading other people's expertise. And also just if you have any kind of bookkeeping questions, we want to do our best to help you, especially with QuickBooks Online, to get more familiar with it, more comfortable with it. So whatever questions you got, whatever video you're on, if it's off topic, go ahead, drop that question in there. We might use your question in a uh, upcoming video. We love that. So thank you all for watching. Let's get into that question. What do we do with invoices, receiving payments? How does that whole thing work? It's a great question, um, and even I would add to that, in addition to the uh, sales invoices and receiving payments, there's also the part when those get deposited into the bank. So now you got this three-headed monster. What do we do with that? Okay, it's getting a little unruly there. So the very first thing, we're in Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, so we're going to put on our landscaper hat. Um, I don't have a hat, but we're going to put on that hat anyway. And uh, we're gonna pretend we're gonna we're gonna pretend we made a sale, and that we are we're gonna go record that somehow. So when we make an invoice, I always like to go to this sales tab. There's multiple ways you can actually get to the invoices. You can go to sales and invoices. Uh, it's also possible to click on this new button up here, and then you got invoice down here. Um, I always like clicking on the sales just to kind of get an overview of the whole sales picture here. So when we click on sales, now it's in the sales overview. We've got our overview, all sales, invoices, payment links, customers, products, and services. So let's go get into our invoices and we'll get kind of a, a view here of what's going on with all of our invoices. So we can see just below the invoice tab, Invoices are really broken down into a couple of major categories and then those two major categories are each broken down into two subcategories. So what I'm talking about, there's invoices that are unpaid and those are broken down into invoices we haven't been paid on yet and the due date for those invoices is passed. So these people are officially late on paying us, right? And then there's the other section which is not due yet. So we haven't been paid on that, but those uh, those invoices, they're, they're not technically due yet. Like if we give somebody 30 days to pay, they're falling within that 30 day range, they're less. Now these overdue, hey, 30 days came and went, you're late, please pay. So that's, we gotta track those down, right? And so that gives you an idea of how good are we at collecting invoices here? What can we expect to collect? And then what have we been paid? That's the second major category of invoices. What have we been paid here recently? And that's broken down into uh, a group of invoices that we've been paid on, but we haven't put that money into the bank yet. Somehow, some way, we haven't deposited that. Um, and then there is the other group that we receive the money and it's been deposited into the bank. So as we scroll down, we can see a list of within the last 12 months, and you can change that filter. Um, we could look at any other of these date ranges here, whether it's this month, last month, etc. You can see all those. So we're looking at the invoices. Each invoice has its own individual line here with the date that we created the invoice, the invoice number, who's the customer, and the amount of the invoice. So we can see those things there and then they're organized right now by status. So we're going to be looking at, at the top, we've got invoices that are overdue and it shows when they became um, overdue how far back, what's coming up here soon, right? So these are the ones that are unpaid, but the due date has not come yet. So there's some, hey, they're, they're due tomorrow. We've got a few that are due tomorrow, one's due today, et cetera. You can see all those. They're coming up very quickly on all of these. And then we've got a couple, these were paid, right? Now, right below those, 
those were deposited. Again, the difference between paid invoices and deposited invoices, the ones that are marked paid, we have not gotten that deposit into the bank and, and cleared the bank yet. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. That's going to take you through the whole list of overdue, due soon, paid, and deposited. So um, what we want to do if, if you make a sale and if you're invoicing somebody, we create an invoice. Um, usually we're going to create an invoice with the intention of sending that invoice to the customer. We have got a blank invoice form here. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and just, I'm going to select the customer. Okay. Hey, sorry about the cut here. When I was pulling up that blank invoice, I was going to try to finish this video. The whole internet just like crashed out on me and we were, we were down for a little bit. So we're back up and running, but that will explain why we've, uh, we're, we're dressed a little bit differently here today. So anyway, we're going to create a brand new invoice. we got a blank invoice created here. Um, and I'm just going to get over into the customer and I'm going to create one for cool cars. Uh, so we're creating that today on January 27th. It's due here in a month, February 26th. Uh, so we're going to go down. Uh, first, you're going to pick what product or service you, you're taking this, you're billing them for. Um, we're just going to say we did some landscaping over there. Okay, so we did some landscaping hours. You could write a description in if you want. Um, we'll just say we spent four hours doing landscaping for total uh, human hours over there and we were billing it at $75 a piece. Now when you click off anywhere it says we've got four hours at $75. That's a $300 amount that we're billing and we're invoicing. Um, what you can do now is you can either save and send. That would actually email it to them since we have the email address entered in up here at the top of the screen, the customer email. Uh, what we're going to do though, we're just going to save and close it though. Just creating this invoice here. In the sample company, we're creating that just for our own records. Okay, we'll pretend that we had sent that. Um, if we did, we would have emailed that off and then eventually we would get a payment for that. Now, what we can do is since we're still on the invoice screen here, uh, we can scroll down and we'll be able to find where is that cool cars invoice, January 27th. Cool cars, $300, due in 30 days. The question was, how do you do the receive payment? So receive payment would be, let's go ahead and click on it. Let's say we're going to receive a payment. Let's pretend for a second that Cool Cars sent us a check in the mail to pay for that $300 thing. So what we're going to do is we would say, okay, they paid us with a check. And you can put in the check number. Let's say it was $6,100. Um, and we're going to deposit it to undeposited funds. Now, um, it gives you some options in here. Undeposited funds. What are we doing with undeposited funds? We sent them an initial invoice of $300, right? And they sent us a check for $300. We are now in possession of that $300 check. We're holding it. So when we mark this off, we say we've received the payment. That means that they sent it to us. But undeposited funds merely means they've paid, but we haven't deposited it into the bank yet. If we look at what happens here, so if we, we've got the $300 amount received and down here, outstanding transactions, we can see we're matching this up. The box is checked here, so it's matching the payment to invoice 1038. It was an original balance of $300, still $300 because they hadn't paid anything yet. And we're saying they paid the entire amount. $300. So we are going to, again, save and close. So that $300 invoice that we had, it did say uh, due in 30 days right here. Now it says paid. Those uh, invoices down below, they say deposited. So where you can see, um, where you can see that activity is if you go to the reports, we received the payment on January 27th. So we'll actually see that here in our balance sheet. So if we look at a balance sheet as of January 27th, um, we will see there's an amount here in undeposited funds. And if we click on that undeposited funds, now we see here's a payment for 6100. Uh, excuse me. That's the receive payment number is 6100. The dollar amount 
is $300. So that payment is in there. And uh, now we're going to go back to the banking screen. Okay, so when we're in the banking screen, we're going to go into the checking account. We're saying we deposited that $300 check. We deposited that check into the checking account. So what would eventually happen is that would come through the bank feed, right? The bank would say we received the deposit for $300. And now we're going to actually be looking to match that to um, the payment that we've recorded. So if we look at, we can show kind of an example. It's a different transaction, but we can see this Travis Waldron or Wald, yeah, Waldron. There's a payment where it says it was matched uh, payment 2064 on 1230 for $103.55. So that's a manual recording that uh, Craig's Landscape did to say we received the payment for $103.55. Now the bank is actually sending over a deposit that says $103.55 was the deposit. Now we're matching those two together so we're saying hey don't duplicate this transaction in our books here. Let's count that as one transaction because we sent an invoice for $103.55. We received the payment, but we hadn't quite put it in the bank yet. Once we do actually deposit that, that transaction will flow through the bank feed and we're going to match that so that now all we simply have is a bank deposit that matches a paid invoice and it closes out that invoice, removes that money from undeposited funds, moves it over into this particular checking account that we deposited the money into. So that's the process of going from invoice to receive payment to deposit. Some of these payment methods may allow you to even skip the receive payment. Let's just say we had sent that initial $300 invoice to Cool Cars. They sent us, maybe they paid us, um, if we had included a link in the invoice to allow them to pay with like a bank transfer. If we were on vacation, for example, and that $300 payment came through um, and we never got into QuickBooks and marked off and received payment. So at that point, what would have happened was we would have the $300 deposit sitting here in the bank feed and we could just match that deposit directly to the invoice and that'll close it out. So. The receive payment is really going to be used a little bit more when you want to reflect that I've received the payment somehow. So probably more likely going to be anytime you get paid with cash or a check or money order, something like that, where you're physically holding on to that money and then you still have to go deposit it into the bank. If you're doing a business where you're out in the field and you send them an invoice and you have like a credit card swiper or something, if there's a couple of days before that money actually hits your account, when they swipe it, like that day, you could put in there, okay, I received the payment and have that side of it. So then you would just match the deposit to that. And there's a lot going on going from the invoice to the receive payment to the deposit and getting all those matched together. If you do have any kind of follow-up questions or questions on any other topic, you can comment below wherever you're watching this. We're going to do our best to get to these as soon as possible, get all your questions answered. We want to help your bookkeeping and QuickBooks experience be better. So ask us whatever questions you got. Thank you so much for watching. If you do like these videos, you know, please, please like it wherever you're watching. Uh, if you can subscribe to us, if you're on our YouTube channel, that would be huge. And uh, click the bell to make sure that you're notified whenever we put these videos out. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.